Can good nutrition improve cognitive function in the aging brain? Welcome to Nutrition Edge on ReachMD. I'm Kathy King. Our guest today is Matthew Resigno, Chief Nutrition Officer of Nutrinic Incorporated in Pasadena, California. He's a vegan sports nutritionist and a nutrition consultant. He has a passion for racing marathons, Ironman triathlons, and ultra cycling events. He is co-author of No Meat Athlete and Appetite for Reduction. Today we'll be discussing brain food for older adults as first seen in today's dietitian. Matt, welcome to the program. Hi, Kathy. Thank you so much for having me. Aren't memory issues expected as part of getting older, Matt? You know, that's a great question, and it's it's one researchers are trying to answer here, you know, and trying to figure out what are our limitations. And I I like to think of it right now as where we were in the 50s with heart disease, right? We just back then thought, hey, you know, the heart gets old, which is a logical way to think of it, right? It's like, oh, the heart's been beating for a long time, and it's eventually going to wear out. So that's probably what heart disease is, right? And then we had the Framingham study that looked at actual risks and said, you know, there are dietary and lifestyle factors that can affect the health of the heart and our own longevity. And now we know that we can reduce the risk for heart disease greatly. And I think we're probably around that time with cognition right now. What are the studies showing us about food and, and cognitive function? It's always tough. You know, my job as both a dietitian and you know someone working in public health is turning these studies and this information into good um, practical recommendations for nutrition. And those are a little difficult. We do know from the study and the the research that's being done is that food, exercise, and lifestyle can play a role in cognition, in memory, and how our brains function as we're getting older. Okay, so which nutrients and foods seem to be most beneficial and why? You know, there's been a lot of research on the B vitamins specifically folate, and I say specifically, but the issue here has been dividing up which nutrients, which B vitamins specifically are helpful, right? Because when we look at B vitamins, we're looking at not just one B vitamin, but there are many B vitamins, and separating them in the research is difficult. But folate specifically, they think, has a role in cognition because it's involved with energy production in the, in the brain. It's involved with DNA and RNA and this genetic material. And um, a research study, it was a cohort with a 1,000 seniors, showed that those who had the highest rates, was the highest quartile of folate consumption, had the lowest rates of Alzheimer's disease. So we have studies like that that say, okay, we know folate is involved. And we know that people who are getting enough folate do have lower rates of some of these cognition-related diseases and disorders. Is folate the only one that seems to be beneficial? You know, another one is vitamin B12. Vitamin B12 is important for everyone, not just vegans and vegetarians. And, for example, the National Institute of Health recommends that all adults over 50 take a B12 supplement. So they're not even saying, oh, make sure you get the foods. They're saying take a supplement because B12 is involved with our brains and cognition. Absolutely. Um, There was a study here in California that found dementia rates were highest in folks with the lowest plasma B12. A side effect of low B12 is elevated homocysteine. And so they found that homocysteine, elevated homocysteine, is a risk factor for not just dementia, but cognitive impairment. And so B12 is very important for older adults in cognition. So we're starting to see some relationships, but not cause and effect necessarily at this time. Yeah, it's a really tough thing to look at and really pinpoint specific, you know, recommendations. You read this research and it looks really good and then the authors themselves say it's too soon to make practical recommendations, right? So it's left for the rest of us to kind of figure out that part. You're listening to Nutrition Edge on ReachMD. I'm Kathy King and I'm speaking with dietitian Matt Resigno and we're talking about brain food for older adults. Matt, which lifestyle factors also help maintain cognitive function? You know, using our brain helps our brain function, just like our heart does. And things like puzzles and being able to figure things out, right, and having challenges and using our brain in ways that it's developed for can help with cognition. And when, you know, I'm looking over the data here, specifically for nutrition-related things, you see a lot of evidence on that doing puzzles, having them involved. Even if a senior isn't working, that doesn't mean that they can't use their brain. They should be using their brain, absolutely. And then the public health part of me says, you know what would fit in with that really well? Cooking. 
And so seniors today in 2016, 2017, back in their day when they were my age, they were cooking a lot. I mean, we could probably learn a lot from seniors about cooking. This is me speaking here without the specific research, but taking the research and saying a cognitive thing is preparing food, right? Finding the recipes, finding the food, seeing how it goes together, and putting all of these things together. And so I think that would be an indirect way to help cognitive function. And then the direct way would also be the food that one would eat after preparing it, which is hopefully some of the healthy foods. That's true. This question is sort of long, but I I know diets are individualized, but what are good nutrition guidelines for improving senior diet, especially foods that are easy to prepare and have on hand, since we know that mobility and access to food can be a problem? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, we got to turn this information into practical recommendations. My answer for so many things, and especially cognition, is beans. The foods highest in folate are beans. You know, one serving of lentils will give you 90% of your daily value for folate. That's incredible, just one serving. And lentils are cheap, they're easy to store, they're easy to cook, and they're easy to eat because they're so soft. For example, I keep lentils in my fridge. I overcook them a little bit just to make sure they're really soft, and I'll add them to everything. You know, even if it's not something you would traditionally think of lentils in, like pasta, I'll be making some pasta with tomato sauce and maybe some broccoli and zucchini. I'll just scoop some lentils in there and you don't even taste it. It just gets lost in the sauce. And it's a way for me to get more protein and more vitamins and nutrition and things like folate. Can you summarize in three to four points what you want us to remember about food and cognitive function? Yeah, the evidence for nutrition and cognitive function is a little limited, but the direction that it's pointing toward is eating more of these foods like beans and berries and leafy greens. And what's great about this is those foods are good for us in other ways. There's no downside to this, right? No one's going to go, oh no, I've been eating berries for six years and it turns out that they're not as good for me as I thought. So it's pretty doubtful that that is going to happen. So leaning toward these foods, cooking is another one. Get in that kitchen. I tell that to everyone, every person I work with, and teenagers. I say, there's a lot there. It's not wasted time. It's fun. It's an art form. And those in senior centers and the dietitians that work in senior centers could get their clients and get the people living there involved. I like your nutrition message and the food message, and that also means that you're pulling away from the prepared foods that are quick and easy and don't have the nutritional value that they used to have or could have. It's not all or nothing. My meals are a combination of cooking from scratch and using prepared things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Canned beans are fine. Give them a rinse. You can get the sodium down, and then we can use those prepared beans. We can use frozen kale. We can use frozen spinach and those things, and and those are fine. It's better to eat them than not eat them. Matt, thank you for bringing your wisdom to us. I really appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Our guest has been dietitian Matt Rusigno. We've been discussing brain food for older adults. I'm Kathy King. You've been listening to Nutrition Edge on ReachMD. Be sure to visit our website at reachmd.com, featuring podcasts of this and other series, and thank you for listening.